you very much, Sal. You're right about the weather as well. Thanks, I'll see you. Uh, let's see, time now is 8.40. This is the moment of the programme. We're going to ask you to listen carefully, aren't mm -hmm. we? Listen carefully. This is one of the most famous intros of any rock song. It was Stairway to Heaven, of course, Led Zeppelin's most famous hit from 1971. But how similar do you think that was to this track by the band Spirit? Well, people will draw their own conclusions yes. immediately, won't they? But the point is, this has now become a major legal battle. Mm -hmm. A jury, judge and jury in Los Angeles uh, are going to hear this. Led Zeppelin's lead singer Robert Plant and guitarist Jimmy Page are going to appear in court today over claims that they stole the opening chords. Did they or not? The court will judge. I'm here to discuss this with musician and writer Sid Griffin. Morning to you. Morning. Uh, it's a very interesting one, this, isn't it? Because how does one judge what is imitation, what is homage, what is uh, something that's new? Inspiration, yeah. Uh, on a personal level, the judiciary won't be listening to me, but I don't think it's, it's plagiarism at all in this case. They've used, uh, Jimmy Page, who ever wrote the guitar riff, and we were assuming it's Page, used maybe eight notes on a scale of 12. Well, he yep. would, wouldn't he? There's 12. and 13, if you count. We're starting at D, we're ending in D, so 13 at the most. It's pop music, much less rock and roll. They're limited forms. They're, they're, mm. they're quite confining. The, the great thing about rock and roll or, or hip hop or whatever is when it reinvents itself, it's doing something new with a, a form that's already quite old. The idea that, that someone took a few notes out of a song that's in the same key based on an A minor arpeggio, which is a standard building block of popular music since it, it was invented, and now that he owes this person a songwriting credit, I, I think is absurd. On, 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 and I quite like Spirit. In fact, whisper it, I like Spirit more than I like Led Zeppelin. Right. But nonetheless, I don't feel this is a strong case. So, Sid, so you, you have your guitar with you, and can you, can you give us some sort of indicators of, of within your work, within the music business, what, what are the areas? That, I mean, you said, you said there are basic staples of the song-making business, so how does that clash then with being a... a taking something off. Exactly. Now, if, if we know that a lot of rock and roll is... Well, a lot of the Chuck Berry and Little Richard back catalogs are that. And, and, right. and, and are they going to all sue each other, all these so 1950s So you, guys? you're doing that. You don't, you don't consider that to be a taking anything off. That's just no. a, a, a building block of no, a song. No, it's a building it? block. And a lot of blues is some guy going... A lot of blues is incredibly repetitive mm -hmm. and in the same keys in the same three chords like early rock and roll. Are all of these guys going to go around suing each other? Blues also has something called floating verses where the sun's going to shine in my back door one day. That's in dozens of blues songs and folk songs. I mean, are all these people going to sue each other? I mean, I feel that when the Marvin Gaye estate successfully sued Robin Thicke and Farrell for that song, uh, Blurred Lines, yeah. which is based on Marvin, undoubtedly based on Marvin Gaye's Got to Give It Up. It was just a rhythm. I wish to go to parties. That's what they based their song on. But the idea that it is the Marvin Gaye song, which the judiciary, which the court agreed yes. it is, I think is, is, is absurd. And it opens up a real barrel monkeys. Real because you could fish. just go back, back and back. and in a sort of... We could be, the courts would be log jammed in both mm. the United States and the UK with cases like that. Um, do you, as, as a musician, as a, as a writer, do you, do you kind of consciously think, or is it, is it just a subconscious thing? It's in our psyche we hear all this stuff. Do you know, some people think, well, I'm going to take that and I'm going to do this in a different way. I think that there's no doubt when uh, Page says he's never heard Taurus by Spirit and was mm. unaware of the track, and I, I do believe him. But if he had, maybe he was inspired by the track. I mean, the Beatles had a big hit with uh, I Feel Fine, which was a... Uh, um, and that is clearly based on Watch Your Step by a guy called Robert yeah. Parker. That, ro <laughs> that, well, anyway, so yeah, both on. Harrison and Lennon love that song. We know that. But when you play uh, Watch Your Step by Robert Parker from circa 61 to I Feel Fine by the Beatles, which is late 64, yeah, they're similar, but it's not a direct ripoff. The thing mm. is, though, I suppose, in a way, if you, on the other side of the coin, if you, if you as an artist have written something hmm. that you know to be yours, yes. and then you hear something a bit later on and you think, hold on, that's like mine. 
Here, here's a question. Yeah, then, then, then what? Let me interject this. Uh, I, I once wrote a song called Looking for Lewis and Clark. Thank you for the applause. And I read <laughs> in the enemy to my horror, this young guy, I was young then, has ripped off a song called If the Kids Are United by Sham 69. Yeah. I'd never heard Sham 69 in my life. I knew they existed. Years later, my song... <laughs> I heard, that's the riff in my song. I heard Sham 69, and they play a riff that goes. And they were close, but I'd never heard their song. Goes back to what I was saying at the top of this interview. The, the form is relatively uh, close. It's, it's not an expanded, expanded infinite form. It's, it's repetitive. And I got a riff that somebody else got a riff that somebody probably had before that some kid, male or female, is probably writing in the greater Manchester area right now with their guitar or piano. Well, and I'd so, like you to play something to Carol because I know you're a big fan of hers. Yes, Carol oh, the Weather Girl. Oh, yeah. You know, the funny, the funny <laughs> thing I was talking about... Oh, Carol, okay, wait the, for it. No, the funny thing I was talking about is here's, here's an example that um, George Harrison was successfully sued for, for My Sweet Lord. I'll be very brief. He <laughs> sang, uh, My Sweet Lord... Number one, my sweet lord. And he was sued successfully by the Chiffons. who had a guy named Ronnie Mac who wrote a hit. And theirs was, he's so fine. Wish he was mine. And he was sued successfully so. And then John Lennon memorably said, if George had changed one or two notes of the melody, yeah. he'd have gotten away with it. Well, Lennon was later sued for Come Together just for taking a few lines just a few lyric lines out of a Chuck Berry song. Can you do that one with to Carol with She's So Fine? Can you just do that for us? <laughs> She's so fine. I wish she was mine. Oh, <laughs> Carol. Say thank you very much. Thank you all very much indeed. <laughs> Morning, Carol. Good morning. That was brilliant. I loved it. Thank you. Good morning.